If you are an anime fan, then you already heard the name of Solo Leveling, and many of you already watched it. At this time, it's one of the popular anime, but did you know about its history? Well, don't worry, just take a ride with me in the history of Solo Leveling. Hi, my name is Lyra, and you are watching Anime Avenue. So let's start our journey. Solo Leveling started when there was only light, dark, and this badass guy. Well, who is this guy? He is the only true god in the solo leveling world. He is the most powerful individual in the world of solo leveling. He is god, so of course nobody has a chance against him. He can create anything from nothing. Once upon a time, when there was only darkness, light, and him, he got bored because there was nothing to do. Then he decided to create something. So he created some beings from light and named them as rulers also created some beings from darkness and named them as monarchs. He orders both of them to do certain tasks. Orders were given to rulers to protect the world and gave orders to monarchs to destroy the world. And from here, the war between rulers and monarchs begins. One is the savior of the world and the other is the destroyer. On both sides, there are powerful entities. So this war took a long time. One day, a powerful ruler got tired of this endless battle he went to the most powerful being to get a solution. He told the powerful being that we are your faithful servants and we are trying our best to protect this world from evils. He told him that we are fighting for good, but we are also facing a lot of sacrifices of rulers. <sighs> the ruler told to the powerful being that please give us more power to defeat monarchs. He told him to give rulers a little more power so they would bring the heads of monarchs to his feet. And guess what the answer from absolute beings was nothing. He doesn't even speak a word and remains silent. At this point, the rulers understood that their real enemy was absolute beings, not monarchs. They understood that he didn't create them to protect the world from monarchs, but instead, he created both of them for just his own entertainment. Rulers realized that he didn't want this battle to end. He doesn't even care if we die or live. He just wants entertainment from us. Here are some rules created by God. Rule number one, worship God. Rule number two, praise Him. And rule number three, prove your devotion to absolute being with blood and lives. If anybody didn't follow all these rules, they would die. So on this point, rulers understood that this war will never end until the absolute being is alive. So all the rulers made a plan. They kill the absolute being and take control of his power and end this war by wiping out monarchs. Every ruler agreed on this plan because they thought it was the right thing to do. Now, you might be thinking why they didn't go to monarchs and together kill the absolute being. They didn't do that because if absolute being get killed, then this war has no end. The monarchs will always try to destroy the world and ruler will always protect it. So, this war will never end. Among the top eight rulers, Every ruler agreed on this decision, except one. The fun part here is that he is the strongest ruler among others, and his name is Ashborn. Ashborn will never rebel against his creator. He most loyal being among all towards his creator. He didn't go against the will of his creator. So he went against these seven rulers. Now, as you know, Ashborn is strong, but not much to the extent that he stood up against seven powerful rulers. Now, after the intense battle, other seven rulers defeated the Ashborn and left him in the blink of a death. After they, they went to the absolute being and killed him. The Abazalit being can't fight because all he did was sit on the throne. He can create something that can protect him, but he can't defend himself on his own. Now rulers became the new god, and by using the power of God, they destroyed monarchs. The battle is about to end, but here is a spicy twist. The Ashborn who they left behind in the blink of death feels power inside him. He comes to know that absolute being hides a hidden power inside him because he is the most loyal ruler among others. The hidden power's name is Rise. This power allows him to make the dead alive from his surroundings. The power manipulates them so even dead rulers join his army. By using this power, he took Monarch's power to the level of rulers from the edge of extinction. He then rushed to stop rulers from killing his creator, but unfortunately, he was late. After this incident, he started his village arc. The war that is going to end now started again for a long period. 
he becomes the Shadow Monarch. The Monarchs become the strongest in the world. Here two powerful Monarchs from the Ashborn army trying to overthrow him. But, they was not able to stand against him. He killed one and another one ran from the battlefield. Now at the point, due to surprise attack, by traitors. The Ashborn army faced a huge loss and he got injured. Another reason is that the King of the Beast ran away and he killed the King of Demons before he got time to heal. Rulers entered the battlefield. Here rulers can defeat Ashborn, but instead of fighting they came to apologize to Ashborn to end this war. Ashborn replied with pride that they had to defeat them to end the battle. Then also rulers apologized to him with respect. He decided that he would not fight with rulers and end this war, but he would take revenge on traitors. After some days of recovery, Ashborn with his army travels the world to find monarchs, but he comes to know that rulers almost destroyed all monarchs and for shelter that ran away to some other dimension. Ashborn followed them and he also went to that dimension. There he meets the strongest monarchs of that era. His name is King of Dragons. Now instead of fighting with Ashborn, he offered him to work together. Now the reason he doesn't want to fight is because Ashborn is much stronger than him and monarchs are very weak at that point because of attacks of rulers. The whole existing purpose of monarchs is to do destruction. This time their target is our Earth. At that time, all are normal humans. Hunters didn't exist at that time and no human has super ability. So to save the Earth, rulers send their army a very heavy battle that took place which led to the extension of humanity after seeing an extension of humanity from Earth. Rulers use a powerful tool of God which is named Cup of Reincarnation. This tool rewinds the time to 10 years in the hope that they will save humanity. But every time the results are the same no matter who wins, humanity is vanishing again and again. Here the tool has a limitation that they can use it for a limited time. So, now, rulers made a plan that will make humans familiar with mana. By doing so, they will protect some humans and defeat monarchs. After that, remaining humans will start a new life. This is why they open the gates of Dungan, which have monsters in it. The aim is to make human familiar with mana. In episode one, they told us that rulers opened these gates, and these gates started opening 10 years ago. Now you know the reason. Rulers select some humans as vessels so that they are born in them to defeat the monarchs. Also, Ashborn needs a vessel for the same purpose, but he can't find it because he is so strong. Ashborn, give this task to an entity at this one which you already saw in episode one. Now, Ashborn told him that he needed a vessel that had faced death many times. And that vessel is Jinwoo. Now, this is the complete history of solo leveling. Please leave a like and a comment if you like this. We will meet soon. Bye.